Let's go. You know what it is. Geeks chat. We're in the pod. Me, Goosey, and the uh, one of the brightest prospects up there in the northeastern scene. We got Robert Ruthless, Mauricio. How we doing? Well, what up? The killing, man. Killing you. Getting ready. Let's go. For people that don't know, 5-0, and oh, four first-round finishes, and a third-round finish, 100% finishing rate. This is this is definitely one of the hottest prospects. He's surging through CFFC right now. Um, so we're waiting for uh, an official announcement. Rob, what's going on? What's the updates here? So uh, they they gave me the offer to fight for the uh, 155 lightweight title. We're, just, we're waiting for the contract, and uh, we're going to hopefully by April. Hopefully by maybe next week we have we, we we have everything signed, but I should be fighting April twelfth for the for lightweight lightweight belt. Oh yeah, lightweight title, yeah. obviously champ of uh, CFFC right now. What what's the name? Who who you got in the uh, horizon? Uh, Ravel Watley, dude's very well rounded man. The dude's stud. He's been around for a long time. He, I believe he fought in uh, in Bellator. He fought Chris Wade. He fought some big names. So you know. He's a good dude. I'm not looking past him at all because he's he's my my biggest test to, to to this date. Yeah, stylistically, how do you think you match up with him? You think it's a good stylistic matchup for yourself? Oh, I think we're both completely the same. To be honest, I think we're both very well rounded. Um, you know, I always tend to see myself as the underdog going going into a fight, so it makes me work harder. But um, you know, I think my striking is is elite level. I think I think my my wrestling is you know is, is up there as well. My jiu jitsu is up there as well. I train with some of the best grapplers in the world, so you know we'll see we'll see where it goes. Yeah, sure. Um, so obviously making that jump to championship fight, I'm assuming five rounds. How how is that preparing for getting that cardio up? Dude, I people people always think that like like are you like ever gonna go that third round? Like how's your conditioning? Like I train for three rounds every single fight. And it's not my fault I finish in the first fight. Like I do my best. But uh, you know, we're we're train we're training for five rounds, ready for like a for like a five round a five rounder. If it goes in four, it goes in four. But we're we're training for five. Yeah, dude. Since so. the last time that we spoke, man, it was like you were talking about, it was your third win. So your third finish. And uh, you know, obviously three and is like a spot where you're like, all right, I'm about to make a big jump. But like here yeah. we are. You know, I was just looking on your story and you had like the UFC article and, you know, yeah. what was that line they hit you with? They were like, the guy who's got hands like a heavyweight, but yeah. hands need like a flyweight. Yeah, oh, that was sick. Man. That that pumped me out. It was like, it was like, it was uh power, the power of a heavyweight and the hands we have a band of weight. And I was like, I was like, oh, damn, I like that one. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's crispy. So how is it seeing yourself in those UFC articles now? Because like I was saying, like last time we spoke, it was like it was a, a thought, like obviously like a goal mm -hmm. that was close. But like you're you're pretty much like right there. Like you're sounds like a title fight yeah. from like a big contender series or something. That's that, that's what everyone's saying, you know, and it, it's surreal because like it's been a dream of mine since I first started fighting before I even fought. I've wanted to make it to UFC and I feel like it's like right there. It's like it's make me work so much harder. So it's, it's freaking awesome, dude. I can't wait. Dude, especially with your finishing rate, bro. I mean, you're I feel like you're a guy that even before this title fight, it's like you could just get call a call at any any moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like they you haven't know, done it before. It's funny. I was talking about it with, with like my coaches and like a, a bunch of my teammates. Like when I, when I was an amateur before I started doing MMA, I had so many kickboxing fights. Bro, I had two finishes out of like 12 kickboxing fights. And then I went to MMA and I haven't seen a decision in MMA yet. Not going to win, you know? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And what, what do you think attributes to that the most? Just that your level of striking is gaps between the MMA guys, or you think it's the smaller gloves, mix of both? I, I would say mix of both. Um, I would think just people aren't used to Chris striking in MMA, that they used to like the the rounded, round, uh, the rounded like over shots and stuff like that, which I, you know, I, I thought him as well, but not as many as, as like some of these like like wrestler background fighters do, and a lot of MMA gyms now you'll see it like a more strict on less technical and more on like theoretical, like what can happen. Where we kind of stick to like working working on our technique and making sure everything's like crisp and, and powerful, and then added on that theoretical kind of mindset towards towards that instead of theory in the beginning, like you do this, this could happen, you know, you should go around stuff like that. That's sick. We focus more on power and finishing and finishing technique. That's sick. That's that's kind of leading right into my next question: is 
like Tiger Shulman's dude, you guys have that group of like that, that little training squad that you guys always are posting, dude, you guys are some killers, dude, between you, Hell yeah. Ricardo, Shane, you got Trezano, a uh, little Burgos is in there. Like, yeah, dude, you guys are like a little killer pack. How's that? How's that training kind of developed through these last kind of like few months? Bro, it's awesome because, you know, uh, I work with Shane a lot. And Shane, for my last fight, he didn't, he didn't have like a like a fight coming up. So he was trained to train. And like when we do fight camps, like, uh, we do something completely different for fight camps. So we'll still do the classes and everything. But we have so much stuff added on. And he goes, bro, I got you. I'll do it with you. Don't worry. I'll be your partner. And I'll, I'll work through you. So like he would he would do extra rounds with me when he didn't have to, and then I had Julio do the same thing even when he was coming back from, from an injury, and then we had we we got to do Bobby Casal, uh, you probably know of him. He's from uh, he trained in Sanford, and then he uh, he flew, flew up to New York, and I kind of joined our team. Really, really intellectual when it comes to like jujitsu and like wall work and the intricacies of like certain positions. And he added that into, into our game. And now it's like we have all these extra hands that just elevated the team, like leaps and bounds. So, like, next couple of years, you're going to see a brand new team, Tiger Showman, that, like, not many people are probably going to be ready for. Dude, that's so exciting, dude. That's exciting as hell. I know, I know, because uh, Ricardo just opened up his spot. I mean, not yep. opened it, but I mean, he was telling me that, like, it's starting to pump. Like, yeah, like we're starting yeah. To get a memo up there. <laughs> yeah, he got it. He got over in uh, Randolph, New Jersey, I believe. Yeah, he's crushing over there too. Yeah, he's killing it, man. He's busy, and uh, I see you'll be doing all those lessons, and uh, you're standing up there doing the exact techniques like every single day, doing that stuff with the uh, Shihan. You know, how yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just working. Dude. I'm it's, no matter what it is. Uh, I just, I just, I just love, I love training. So, you know, um. So when 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 they call me up in front of all the people, it just it's, it's like I can't really describe it. I don't know. I, I don't really know is there anyone else there. I just listen to it to to what to what he's saying and I just do it. Hell it's yeah! Cool. Fire, fire. And then um, so like you mentioned, you were kickboxing, transitioned to MMA. Have you been at Tiger Shulman's the whole time through that through that process? Yep, I have never left. I've been at Tiger Shulman's since I was five years old. Damn, so you've been prepping the takedowns, the wrestling, all that stuff, and it's just yep. coming together, pieces of the puzzle right now. Exactly, yeah. So I was I would train jiu-jitsu and, and wrestling even on my first kickboxing fight. And I only stopped taking jiu-jitsu and wrestling like two weeks before a kickboxing fight just so I didn't get hurt. But okay. other than that, I was grappling and wrestling the whole time. Nice, nice. So and I, and then I was gonna say obviously Tiger Shulman, you got that Northeast. You're you said the title fight they're shooting Atlantic City. Is yeah. that something that excites you getting uh yeah. getting in front of those fans? Hell yeah, because I know it's gonna get I already have like 50 people in my school who I told are like, yeah, we're going 100 percent So the minute the contract signed, the minute my name's on those tickets, that's just getting packed out. It's gonna be sold out. Let's that's, go. That's lit. And uh, this fight, I mean, I'm sure this fight means like the most. I mean, it's your first title fight in MMA, I imagine. And, you know, that's just such a big thing to bring home a belt, you know. So how, yeah. do, you, how do you uh, expect that night to kind of go if you get that matchup? Um, I mean, like, I don't ever look for a finish. I I know he's going to look to try to try go over a takedown. We, we watch all of his fights and and the way he shoots. To, and we already did a bunch of research even before, like they gave us the fight. Once you know, he once uh, uh, CM Punk went went to him after he won. He was like, you know, Rob Virtue called you out. I knew I was next. Like I knew like no matter what, I was getting title fight. So the next day, I watched this fight against Armando three or four times in a row. Like my girlfriend got sick of me. She was <laughs> like, can you put something else on. And I was like, sorry. And yeah. we had to watch this like some some kind of rom com. But I watch it four times, watching the way he shoots, the way he shoots from, what he does, and I'm just just I'm I'm ready for everything. Hell yeah, dude! And do you have like a crazy recovery process? Like a lot of these guys, are you hitting like the ice bath and and the red the red light? Are you doing any of that kind of stuff? Nah, fuck that, man. I, I wake up on Monday, I go to train. I do, I do, I do a cry chest, a cryo chest. Uh, wow, my, my speech impediment. A cryo session here or there. Uh, I got PTs. I do that on uh, every single week on Tuesday with the Edge Pro. But there was no injuries really from this fight, so I went right back to training. I, 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 I kind of go back into it a little bit slow to, keep, to help my body recover. So I go like three or four days that week, 
and then four days a week, three days a week for the next couple of weeks, and then right back to hard training like a month after. But I'm I stayed in shape the whole time. Of course, I ate a little bit, but stayed in shape, kept lifting. I was doing two days the first day back. So that Monday, actually, I trained two hours and lifted. Two, I did two a day that day. So yeah, you're what's not, up. champ camp. Obviously, move. and then you're in New Jersey. You know, no need for the cold plunge up there this time of year, huh? Exactly, bro. It's fucking freezing down here, dude. It's miserable, <laughs> bro. You see the trends, bro. Everybody's doing all that weird, crazy stuff, like. Everyone thinks that they, you know, they're such a better person for getting in an ice bath in the morning. Bro, I'm I'm just like I'm like it's cool, man. I'm just like I'd rather just you know sleep like an extra half an hour. I'll take the half an hour over another cold plunge. It's uh, funny because Tr- uh, Trudano does it, and I'm like honestly, it looks cool. It looks pumped up, but like for me to prep that in the morning, I won't be able to do that. No way. Yeah, no that's way. the total flex. It's a total flex, yeah. bro. Yeah. And how many like, times do you see? How many times have you heard of a person that does ice baths but doesn't post about it? Everybody posts that thing, bro. I swear. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Damn, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Damn. <laughs> All right, but let's, it's crazy, dude. Wow. But let's get into some predictions here. Lightweight gotcha. predictions. BMF title on the line. We got Max Holloway coming up to 55, bro. This is going to be an absolute banger. Probably the fight of the year. Who you got? Uh, I got Gaethje, dude. I don't know. Holloway couldn't couldn't really take Poirier, but only thing is Poirier is like he's boxing is a little more crisp than Gaethje. I don't know. That's the hard one, but maybe Holloway. If 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 Holloway could keep it on the feet and not you know play into Gaethje's like uh like scrap game, maybe. But if Gaethje brings his jab back like he did against uh. Like a fizz, fizzy, how the fuck you say it again? Like yeah, it's something like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, as again, it's you've seen like I've seen these two people fight complete, completely different ways. You can't really. It's it's one of those hard the hard the bet fights. I would I would stay away from that fight on betting to be honest. But I would go Gaethje. Right, it's just so dead even down the middle. Yeah. Goosey, well, who would you lean in that one? Just asking, dude. I'm gonna be honest. Probably a little bit of bias, but I think it's gonna be hard for Gaethje to get. Holloway out of there as the fight goes on. I think Mm -hmm. Holloway's cardio is going to be better than Gaethje's if he's not playing that scrap game. So it's like if Gaethje can bait him in, he'll probably catch him. But if Max stays technical, I can see him getting over late and probably like I can see that Mm -hmm. being like a real close decision because I don't see Holloway finishing him, but I do see it like a questionable third round with where Holloway wins the last two, Gaethje wins the first two. Is that going to be a five rounder? Yeah, they for the for the BMF title, they put it up for five. That, that's, actually, that's fucking funny. I, the biggest thing is, dude, everyone talks about, like, all the guys that fight Gaethje, they're like, he's the hardest leg kicker I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, that was devastating. And then Max Holloway, like, you know, Volk was chopping him up. And, like, mm-hmm. Gaethje's, like, landing those at that upper weight class. Like, I don't know if Max has really felt that before. Yeah. So I don't know, bro. <laughs> it's going to be a good fucking fight, dude. I can't wait to watch that one. Right, we got we got this weekend though. Yeah, dude, this weekend's a big one too. Well, we got not too big. Who is Between it? This week? the main event, Piper Hermanson. Oh yeah, he is, was a middleweights, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like they're setting up Piper. Yeah, but did they Hermanson gonna get walked over though? I don't know, dude. I don't. That's know. the thing, dude. We've been seeing a lot of fraud checks on guys yeah. that have been getting a little bit overhyped, but. Piper, I mean, he really hasn't shown any weaknesses. I don't know what Hermanson, unless he plays the cardio game with him. Yeah. But, but. you know, I like Pfeiffer, but you remember that Majeski fight? He was commentating. He did say I wasn't tested. That's all I'm saying. He said yeah. I wasn't tested when I fought Majeski. I got a little beef for my man Pfeiffer. Hey, man. Yeah. You got to get pushed a little bit. You, gotta, you know, <laughs> just a little bit. Just feel it. Ooh, just want to feel it. <laughs> Big yeah. big one from this weekend, actually. Switching sports up. Who you got in the Super Bowl? Oh, you see, you can't hate Mahomes, dude. Like Mahomes, he's he's like you can hate seeing him, but you can't hate him. He's he's just a, a good dude, you know. So I'm going with Mahomes. You, you just can't hate the dude, man. It's Facts. just it just seems so like. How are you gonna bet against him? That's, yeah, exactly. You feel like such an idiot. It's like betting against like Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. It's like exactly, you know, 
It's like what I do think you- I think people just just want to see freaking Taylor Swift not win something for once. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yo, Charles Oliveira and Armin Sarukian. Oh, dude, that's gonna be a bomb burner, dude. People think that Charles is just gonna walk through this man for some reason, bro. No, it's like because people are bandwagons over Charles Oliveira, and people also thought that Tony Ferguson was gonna walk over uh, Patty Bimblet. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I got a, uh, I got Armin, bro. I don't know. I think Oliveira's. You can't count him out, but I don't know. I, I got Armin on that one. Yeah, if it was that yeah. easy, he'd be the favorite. But he's the underdog. Yeah. So I feel like they're like yeah. asking you. They're like, "Come on, doesn't this look good? Come over here." Yeah, you look exactly. You know, and like Oliver is good and all, but I feel like he's not. I mean, maybe that loss to Islam probably changed him a little bit. But at his striking, like if you don't play in, into his grappling, right? Uh, if you drop him, you get let, let him right back up. But like when he fought Chandler, Chandler fought him completely wrong. Um, like he like he dropped him and tried for tried to finish him and he, he playing a, a nice a nice guard game. You gotta let him up and just go 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 back on him again. You know it's not. I don't know. I got I got Armin. Yeah, that's yeah. Gonna be- yeah. Surukin is that dude. And then um, last big one fifty five fight. Benoit Saint Denis versus Poirier, UFC Miami. I'm all over the building for that. I'm all over DP. Yeah, I got DP on that one too. I can't, I can't go against my boy DP, man. Especially over five rounds, which is interesting that they're doing that, but they are doing five rounds for it. I think is, that is, is, is the main event? Off. No, right? Come no. You got Sugar Cheeto as the main that night. So wasn't Benoit? Wasn't he the backup for uh, for Islam versus uh, Charles? No, that was, was uh, uh, that was Benil. That was Gamrot. Benil. Gamrot, 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 Gamrot. So why did they go with Volk then? I they just cut him. I think they just wanted the money to grab. Makes sense. Yeah, interesting. But, Where's yeah. Gamrot? Is, is he fighting soon? He he's Gamrot? got one signed, I think. Who's he fighting? I think they gave him a killer. It's a good fight. I'm gonna look it up right now. Got you. Me too. Um. What was that co-named? Oh, dude, DP and Benoit? Gamrot. Oh, it's Gamrot versus RDA. Ben- UFC Miami. Benoit St. Denis is the same guy that everybody picked Matt Frivola to get the upset over. I mean, that didn't pan out too nicely. But, like, no, let's no. not forget, like, we were just picking Matt Frivola to beat this guy. And, like, now we're just going to turn around and be like, oh, he's going to beat DP. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah. yeah. Like, I get it, yeah. bro. Matt Frivola is good. And like everyone was picking him for a reason, and he did turn him off pretty badly. But like, I still had him in the mid- before the fight. Like, it doesn't change like where I had it. Like, you can't jump that far up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got I got DP by very decisively. But can, it's the craziest sport, and it can happen, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then uh, Rob, flipping it honestly back to you a little bit. Obviously, one fifty five er on the cusp getting in the UFC. You look at these guys. How do you think you stack up with them? You think you got well, a little bit of training to go, or you think you could get in that cage right now? You know, I think I'm top 15 right now, to be honest. Like, I, I say it all the time. But you, if, if you look around, like, me, some of my friends, they ask me the same question. And I I pick apart these dudes sometimes. I'm just like, the, when they fight, obviously, you know, it's always different when you get in there. But I think I'm top 15, top 20 right now. Give me a couple of years. I'll be top five, if not champ. Let's go. Dude, let's, let's go. That's go. fire. All right. Well, we won't oh, waste yeah. any more of your time. I know we've been milking the clock here. Uh, <laughs> you have any final message maybe to shout out to this guy to get him to sign the contract? Yo, listen. Um, I appreciate you guys. You guys are the man. Uh, shout out to all my sponsors. Um, Edge Pro, Optimum Health, Jen, uh, Evolution of Tropics, like, uh, Charter Links. I don't think I'm missing anybody. Optimum Health Performance. Miss anybody? I think so. And yo, Robert Wally, sign the contract, bro. I'm trying to trying to throw it down, baby. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You heard him, Robert. You heard him. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, always a pleasure, Rob. Can't wait for that next fight, man. Six and oh, six finishes, and then probably a phone call. Probably a phone call. Let's go. Let's go. Contender series in the summer, baby. Let's get it. 
Let's go. You gotta hop back years. on. With us. You gotta hop back on oh, yeah. right before that. Of course. You guys, you guys, my first ever interview. I don't know if you guys remember that. My first ever one at the CFSC, my first interview ever. Let's, Let's go. go. Well, Day actually, one. Actually, I don't think uh I think it was just me and you, Mason. I don't think yeah, Goose didn't make it. It was yeah, me and you. Goose. I didn't hop in that out of here, boss. Nah. <laughs> well, I had to make it back for the rerun here. So <laughs> Let's go. Sure. Enough. Well, yeah, this one's still early. You know, by the time he's done knocking down freaking bodies in a you know a couple of years, you know, he'll be like those damn geeks, bro. We'll <laughs> oh, <yeah>. together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob. We'll take it All easy, right. boss. See you guys. Preach. Yeah.